Homemade or bottled? Which fake blood concoction is the best? Let's find out. How's that look? That throw, look okay? Throw it down one Yeah, time. throw it down one throw time? Down one Homemade or... <laughs> Homemade or bottled? Which fake blood concoction is the best? Let's find out. What is up, everybody? I hope you all are having a phenomenal day. I'm John Taylor Timmons. I'm here with my brother, Kiwan, my girlfriend, Madison. We are Red Eye Film Productions, and it is a beautiful day to film in Savannah, Georgia. Red Eye Film Productions is a growing production company here in the 912, and we are crafting original film content for you every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. So subscribe, like, comment, share, and turn on that bell so you know when we post one. All right, so as a film production company that uses fake blood in almost everything we produce narratively, it is an investment for us. It's an investment into our, the actor's safety, it is an investment monetarily, and it also is an investment into the quality and overall look of the movie. So it's super important. I mean, you could make an incredible movie with phenomenal performances, but if your fake blood looks hokey, it can overall ruin your movie. In the past, we've used both bottled and homemade fake blood, though we tend to use bottled more, even though it's more expensive. Which got me thinking, why are we using expensive bottled blood when we could be using our own homemade fake blood and save some money? In this video, I want to compare and contrast homemade blood versus bottled blood to see what's best for you and what's best for us. We are judging them on four criteria on a scale from one to 10. The first criteria is realness. How true to life does the blood look? The second is anatomical usability. How many different ways can we use the blood on the body? The third criteria is stainability. How bad does it stain fabric? The fourth criteria is price. How much does it cost per quart? Just a quick disclaimer, we are testing this on a cotton blend, so if you are using a different fabric, absolutely test it on a swatch. Let's get bloody. First, we will have to test how realistic the blood looks. My girlfriend and Red Eye's lead producer, Madison Abernathy, is also an actress, and she's been slathered in blood many a time. Many, many times. By me. <laughs> and she'll be the person on whom we test the two concoctions today. Are you excited? Oh boy. <laughs> she's stoked, as you can tell. So excited. <laughs> This is the blood that I choose to use. Oh, it's it's that that face recognition is incredible on the EOS off. Duck. No, 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 keep ducking. This one is the personal favorite of Red Eye Film Productions because it has a nice red tint to it. It also looks the best after color grading, and it also isn't too gloopy, which is great when you're being splattered with it as an actor, so. Our second contender is the classic corn syrup recipe. Which we have in this giant bucket right here. <laughs> I really like this blood because it has so many different ingredients, three types of colors. If you're interested in making your own blood, we will be doing a separate video on the recipe for this blood. For the first criteria, to see how realistic and true to life the blood looks, we are going to be doing two tests. The first one is on the back of the shirt, and that's the splatter test. The second one is on the front of the shirt, and that's the bucket of blood test, the fun one. Contender number one. All right, here we go with the splatter test. This is fake blood number one. This is the vampire blood concoction. That's the bottled blood. Go ahead, turn around. I really love how this one splatters. It, it just has this excellent texture to it. It beats up only a little bit before it really like sinks in. Time to put the brush away. All right, everybody. I have a pint of blood in this. This is the vampire blood bucket test. You ready? Here we go. This is the blood concoction number two. This is the homemade recipe, and this is the splatter test. Now, it seems to be beating up a lot. I don't really like that. I like it to sink into the fabric. Hey, 
And here we go, another bucket test. This is the bucket test for the homemade corn syrup concoction number two. Yeah? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot. Do it. It's so much. And in three, two, wait, we don't have an audience. Oh, we have a little bit of an audience. What's up, you guys? I did, I did it for your torso. The results. The vampire blood gets a solid 10 out of 10 in the realness criteria. It looks incredible. The homemade blood gets a 9 out of 10 in the realness criteria. It splatters wonderfully, but the only reason I dock it is because when put into a bucket, it looks a bit purple. The bottled vampire blood gets a 4 out of 10 in anatomical usability. With the vampire's blood, it was very easy to get out of my hair. I've had that in my hair multiple times, and you can usually get it out in one rinse. Even though it comes out of hair easily, you aren't supposed to put it in your mouth, and it's a nightmare to get off your skin. The homemade blood gets a 7 out of 10 in anatomical usability. It's just sugar and food dye, so it tastes great and it does not stain the skin. Where it gets docked 3 points is how uncomfortable it makes the actor. I just don't recommend dousing your actor in it because of the uncomfortableness that comes with it. Because it, when I dab the towel on my skin, as you can see, because it's still kind of on there, um, it feels like it's ripping my arm hair out, which is not fun. So this is the test that most people care about. We've let these dry for 24 hours, and now we are headed down to the laundry room to see if it's gonna come out of fabric. Let's go ahead and start them up. The vampire blood gets a three out of 10 in the stainability criteria. This stuff stains everything. It didn't come close to washing out of the white t-shirt. The homemade blood gets a 10 out of 10 in stainability. I've personally never seen it stain anything and it came right out of the shirt. That doesn't mean you can use it in a zombie massacre on your mom's couch though. The bottled blood gets a 5 out of 10 in the fourth and final price criteria. You can buy a pint on Amazon for $8.19. The homemade blood gets a 9 out of 10 in the price criteria. I was able to make 2.5 pints out of what I bought at Kroger for $6.04. So, to me, it's obvious that the homemade fake blood wins here. Please subscribe for some more really cool content like this. We're trying to upload every single week, sometimes multiple times a week. We're building a really fun channel here, so I invite you to grow with us. We move into our new office tomorrow, which is incredible, and we have a stage now to create some really cool content for y'all. Also, don't forget to like this video and tell us what fake blood you like the most in the comments. Again, we're gonna be releasing the recipe to our own homemade fake blood very soon, so keep a lookout for that. Till next time, this is Red Eye, signing out.